Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, I will be sharing my most recent custom project, some fully articulated vintage collection off-world Jawas. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, be sure to hit that like button, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. Upcoming videos will feature similar projects, diorama builds, and more from the vintage collection, so stay tuned. Welcome back everyone, today I am very excited to share with you a project that I've been eager to finish and here they are, some fully articulated custom off-world Jawas. Jawas are some of my favorite characters, there is just something about them that says Star Wars. And luckily we've gotten this off-world Jawa from the Mandalorian as a recent vintage collection offering. The soft goods on this figure are quite nice and the overall figure is a decent addition to anyone's collection but they do lack a little bit of articulation and the sculpted sleeves do make it hard to engage with the weapon. Not to mention there is very little articulation when it comes to the lower body, limiting a lot of your stances and just the overall posing that can be done with this figure. The figure could be considered a bit of a salt shaker, and as I mentioned before, has difficulties engaging with the accessory and pulling off a convincing sitting pose. So I decided to fix this problem by utilizing some amazing tooling that Hasbro has provided recently. The Vintage Collection VC227 Quill is a spectacular figure that we've recently gotten. A truly remarkable figure for its size. It has all the articulation one needs to achieve a plethora of action poses. If Hasbro releases another soft goods Jawa in the future, they should absolutely consider using this tooling moving forward. It is truly perfect. The figure is still currently available through a variety of retailers, and several have started to pile up at my local Target, many with non-mint cards. Therefore, I wanted to utilize them for a list of customs that I had been compiling. Not only is the figure perfect for customs, it also has some excellent accessories that work well for the same purpose. The backpack is well sculpted and a great addition to any figure. I simply sliced off the peg, allowing it to sit flush on my figure and use some Elmer's tack to adhere it. I started my process by removing the head and unnecessary items. The quill figure has a belt with shirt flaps that help cover up the waist articulation. This is made of a soft plastic and is secured in place with two small pegs. Rather than boil water, I simply sliced off the belt, which will be used as custom fodder later. The two pouches on the belt are bulky and prevent the soft goods rope from closing properly, thus why I removed them. Plus, all the articulation will be covered by the robes later. Next, we need to remove the barbell from the head using a pair of pliers. Once removed, it needs to be placed back on the figure's neck, allowing the Jawa replacement to rest on top later with Elmer's tack. The original figure has a fantastic head sculpt that I would like to use for some sort of custom later on, but I'm not sure what. Suggestions are definitely welcomed. Next, we need to give the Jawa a taste of his own scavenger medicine by removing all the items that we will need for this project, specifically the head, bandolier, and robe. The soft goods for this figure are spot on and make up the majority of the figure's appearance. So if you really wanted, you could simply add the accessories to Quill and have yourself a better articulated Jawa. But since the split in the robe would show the original legs during an action pose, I need to solve this issue. To create the color needed for the legs, I'm going to use a series of acrylic paints that can be found at most local art stores. A mixture of white, black, purple, and yellow will create the match needed. Due to the figure's size and the amount of actual paintwork, this project will not require a lot of paint. Begin by mixing small amounts of white and black paint until a medium gray color is achieved. Next, add a dash of the purple color, mixing it thoroughly and finishing it off with a hint of yellow. The yellow is intended to add some vibrancy to the mix, but only a small amount is needed. I topped it off with some extra purple and black to darken the mix and achieve what I thought was the best color match. Remember that it doesn't need to be a perfect match since the robes will cover up most of what we'll be painting. Start by dabbing a thin amount of paint on the brush and then applying it to the legs. The painting process will consist of dry brushing the color onto the figure and working it in with a series of multiple passes. Remember to keep the paint light on your brush. Only thin coats are needed. If things get messy, don't worry. You can easily wipe away the excess with water and a paper towel before it dries. Moving on to the next step, I realized the joints were frozen. 
And since I did not want to submerge my project in water, thus ruining the paint, I simply used an X-Acto to help unstick the joints. I've done this before with other figures and it seems to work pretty well. Apply a very light coat of paint to the knee joint and dry brush it several times. Applying paint to these areas is tricky since movement will cause the paint to scratch away. The dry brushing will allow a thin coat to stain the knee, resulting in minimal damage when moved. As the initial figure dried, I started work on a second one. Using the same methods, I applied paint throughout, but opted to show you how you could also paint the upper torso as well. The addition of gray paint to the upper body instantly makes the figure look completely different, and just goes to show you that a little paint goes a long way. I then allowed the figures some proper dry time. Moving on, it's time to work on the accessories. I have a nice stockpile of ammo pouches and bandoliers that I've purchased from Marauders, and I can link them in the description down below. The modular ammo belts are great, and I like to plan their layout for each figure before diving in. It's important to know what the final design will look like, but also how it will function. I try to ensure nothing prevents any movement or restricts the figure in any way. Once the layout is complete, we will need to move on to weathering. To create the color needed for the wash, I'm going to use my go-to weathering recipe, a mixture of black, brown, and chromium green oxide. Just like before, we will not need a lot of paint since the objects being painted are very small. Mix a 70 to 30 ratio of brown and green paint, and then add a dash of black to achieve the desired color. Once mixed thoroughly, we should have a nice muddy color to dirty up our accessories. Next, add some water to the mixture to help dilute it and create a wash. Once ready, apply a generous amount to the ammo pouch and finish it off with a dry brushing. Ensure that paint is working into all corners and edges of the accessory. For the smaller pouches that are difficult to handle, a pair of pliers is very useful. Finish applying a wash to all remaining accessories, giving them a nice weathered appearance. Moving on, we will need to apply some brown paint to the modular belts, giving them a nice leather look. Using some burnt sienna mixed with our original brown paint, we will create a convincing color that is needed to achieve this. Using a small clean brush, apply generous coats of paint to the modular belt. You will want to cover it thoroughly. So applying heavy coats will ensure that it's covered, but also result in a leather appearance once everything has dried. Using a toothpick or cooking skewer is very helpful for finishing off the last section and will allow the belt to dry safely. Once everything has dried, we can add the final detail to the belt. To do this, we'll be using a silver paint marker. Carefully add the detail to the belt buckle using the marker. Believe it or not, this looks harder than it actually is. Just remember to take your time and be patient. The silver paint dries quickly, but be careful not to smear it. Once it's ready, apply a light coat of weathering to dirty it up. Once all the painting is completed, we will need to secure the pieces in place. I definitely recommend using latex gloves when attaching these small accessories with super glue. Things can get messy. Start by applying some glue to a piece of scrap material. Then using our toothpick, apply the adhesive to the ammo pouch and the peg hole on the belt. Once ready, carefully attach the ammo pouch and apply pressure to ensure a strong bond. Repeat this process for the remaining accessories, carefully placing each item on the belt in the configuration desired. The glue should create a strong bond, but if something does fall off in the future, you can easily reattach it. Allow the glue some proper dry time to ensure the best possible bond. To finish off the belts, I'm going to use a matte clear coat by Krylon that I picked up from the craft store. Apply some light sprays from a six inch distance covering all angles of the belt. Once the belt has been allowed to dry, you can see how nice the weathering looks when paired with the matte finish. And now that everything is complete, we can assemble our Jawa.
Now that is one bad looking crew. I hope you've enjoyed this video and find it inspiring for any of your future custom or world building needs. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts and suggestions in the comments down below. And I will see you on the next video.